What's up guys, Jeff Cavalier, AthleteX.com. Today we're talking all about the traps. A new series here, we're gonna break down the anatomy, the function of the traps, and most importantly, oh, oh, all Jeff, the Jeff, exercises. Jeff, 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 you forgot my intro. But you're not even in this video. Well, that's why I'm here now. I'm in the video. Run it. How is that any different from the last one? <laughs> Clearly you didn't hear the explosions. And of course this is spoken by someone that doesn't understand the nuances of introduction creation. Yeah, I just heard a lot of noise. That's it. You know what? You're a lot of noise. A distraction. Can you just get out of here? Uh, all right, fine. But the next introduction is going to be even better. I promise. Back to the regularly scheduled programming here, guys. The traps. Today I want to show you what to do, how to hit these muscles the best. Let's get it started, guys. A lot of information to cover. So when it comes to the anatomy of the traps, like any other muscle, it's important to look at the orientation of the fibers within that muscle. I say it all the time, if you want to see how a muscle functions, then follow the fibers. And with the traps having three different zones and areas really, we know that there's three different orientations of the fibers that we're talking about. In the upper area of the traps, we're talking about an orientation that runs down and out, starting at the back of your skull on that bump that you can feel back there and running out towards the tip of your shoulder. And because we know that they're running up in this direction, some type of elevation of the shoulder girl is a dead giveaway. But beyond that, take advantage of the fact that these things do run this way and not just straight up and down, and it's going to give us an indication of something we might want to include when we talk about upper trap training that I'm going to show you in a second. When we move down, we start to work towards the attachments on the thoracic spine, we see that it becomes more of a parallel orientation, just east and west. And that's going to give us an idea that they're not necessarily responsible for shrugging up and down in the middle trap area, but they're actually responsible for retracting the shoulder blades and bringing them and pinching them back together. So exercises that favor this motion are going to be able to hit these fibers more appropriately. And we work ourselves down to the bottom in the lower traps and we realize that the fibers now start to go down in this direction. Now we're looking at something that wants to pull the shoulder blades down and back to help to depress them, particularly as we raise our arm up overhead for stability, and we realize that the exercise options available to us there are going to once again reinforce that function. So with that being said, guys, let's start breaking them down zone by zone, upper, middle, and lower traps to really find out not just how these things work the best, but most importantly, what exercises work these areas the best. All right, so when we start with the upper traps, the thing I want to jump out at you more than anything else is because these fibers are doing this and running in this direction, they're the ones most responsible for everything that gravity is trying to make more difficult for you, meaning that this area of the traps is the one that bears the greatest load on a day in, day out basis, meaning that it is the one that responds best to high tension loads. So as we talk about when it comes to any muscle function, there's a couple ways to do this. Number one, we could do it for more duration, and the traps happen to be a good long duration muscle because of the responsibilities of carrying your arms in the proper position day in and day out. But again, beyond that, they have a much higher capacity for load. So here I want to go long duration. I'm looking at exercises like the carry. And I'm talking about either done with dumbbells, Right? You can use any pair of dumbbells and walk around your living room if you're training at home or walk around the gym, obviously. Or you could use a trap bar, which makes it a little bit more challenging to balance this for a little bit more stability of the upper traps. Or you can hold a pair of kettlebells as well. Again, all of them reinforcing the same function and do it for time. See, these long duration exercises are best performed for time. And we're talking about at least 60 seconds and upwards of two minutes. If we want to go for a high tension load, but we want to do it for more of a short duration to try to create more strength in this muscle group, then the thing we should be looking to do here is some version of a shrug. Right? The shrugs are not necessarily measured in time, but in reps. So here we talk about loading up a bar and again performing this upward shrug of the shoulders, just pulling them up towards your ears. We know that's one of the main functions of the muscle. Hold on for a second for a variation that could be even slightly better. The same thing here can be done obviously with the trap bar as well. The difference though, as I want you to see, is that the angle of the arms becomes not just completely vertical, but angled outwards, and that should jump out at you as well. That means it's reflecting more of the orientation that the fibers are following in the first place. Where we talked about how they don't just go up and down, but down and out. So the trap bar shrug gives us a little bit better angle to mimic and mirror that. So it's a great way to do the exercise. But I've been talking about that other variation. 
And this is the one that I like to do with a cable. And now I'm doing that shrug and pulling my shoulder up towards the back of my head here, right towards the origin, except this time I'm doing it directly in the same orientation as those upper trap fibers, giving me a better angle of pull, giving me a chance to really overload and create significant tension here, especially if we're trying to build this muscle up for more strength and size. So instead of working our way down to the middle traps, I want to skip that zone for now and go down to the lower traps. Because see, if the upper traps are responsible for high tension, then the lower traps are responsible for focused tension. Meaning that their job is really more about stability than necessarily providing overload. But we can do the same thing here. We can apply more of a long duration load or a short duration load depending upon the exercises that we pick. If we're talking about long duration, then the exercises that I like here are number one, the Y press. We know that the lower trap's job is to provide that depression of the shoulder blade and the stability of the rotation of the shoulder blade as our arms raise up overhead. Well, the Y gives us sort of an on-ramp to rotation overhead, right? Because we don't go all the way straight out overhead. We're just going up at an angle of about 45 degrees. So it's a good place to start. But again, the key here is not to rush through this or to try to load this up. The key is to provide a good, solid contraction. If you're not feeling it, then you're wasting your time. Quality repetitions is the only thing that matters here. But if you're looking for that next step, then instead of just going at that Y angle, go for it up overhead. This is called the prone press. And once again, the load is sort of irrelevant here. You don't even really need to use any weights at all if you don't have the ability to use them. But the point is that you keep yourself in this slightly retracted position to get a little bit of that middle trap engagement. But most of all, it's about raising your arms fully up overhead as much as you can and providing that stability from the lower traps to make that work as smooth as possible. That said, if we shift the focus away from the long duration to the short duration rep measured way to train this area, then the first exercise here that I want you to do is the plate raise. As you raise your arms up overhead, the lower traps now have to fire and engage. Make sure those lower trap fibers are doing their job to stabilize your arm in the overhead position. You slowly lower it down to work on the eccentric component of that muscle, and again, you raise it back up again. This is not gonna go on for a long period of time here, guys. You're looking for that 12 to 15 repetitions always high quality. And then of course, you know I had to cover the face pull. But this is a variation of the face pull that I've showed you more recently that I love even more than the face pull. Because it's got all the elements of the perfect face pull with the additional arm reach that we get here with this overhead press. And we know once again that as I press up overhead, those lower trap fibers are gonna be recruited quickly to make sure they do what they always do to provide that stability as those arms go up overhead but it's got all the components here, even has the retraction component that we get for those middle traps too, that makes this just a winner exercise every single time, no matter which way you look at it. And now having covered the upper fibers and the lower fibers, I saved the middle fibers for last for a couple reasons. Number one, they usually get relegated to last place because nobody really ever trains them. That's gonna change right here today. And secondly, they kind of have a hybrid function. You can hear that I've already mentioned that they're like, they're, they want to kick in when we're doing some of the upper trap work and even some of the lower trap work. So their function is a combination of high tension, high load capabilities and focus tension capabilities that we get from the lower traps. Well, I've got two exercise options for you. Number one, a body weight one, and this is called the back widow. And the back widow is key to hitting this area because we're driving the elbows into the ground. You see, if I were to take my elbows off the ground and drive with my hands, I get more extension of the arm back behind my body, but this is going to shift the focus more towards the rear delt and even the triceps as I extend my elbows. We don't want that. To really get to those middle traps, which are a harder to hit area, we want to make sure that we drive with the elbows. But from there, we can actually go into a long duration hold. And that's just by simply getting in that position, and like I said, holding it. So we have the ability to do the same exercise in two different ways, just by simply either getting there and staying there, or doing this more as a repetition-focused exercise. Which gives me my second option here, which is one of my favorite ways to train the middle traps, and it's the wraparound row. And once again, we could do this in two ways. We could do this either as a long-duration hold, or as a short-duration rep-focused exercise. The key here, though, is the setup. You can see that I have my cable machine set wide. Why are we doing this? Because we're actually trying to get a good pre-stretch here on the middle traps. And I can do that here because by getting my arms across my body, I've opened up my shoulder blades as much as I possibly can. I've protracted them around my body as much as I possibly can. This sets the stage for a better recruitment of these harder to reach fibers right from the get-go. 
The fact is, this is one of the best ways to overload this area if you want to load the weight up or decrease the load a little bit more and focus more on that high tension. Remember, this area is capable of both. Which you do is up to you. So there you have it, guys. All about the traps, breaking it down scientifically, and most importantly, showing you what you need to do to train this area and to train it right. Remember, guys, there's no unimportant muscles here. You got to make sure you train them all. When it comes to muscles in the back, you got to make sure you train them even all more because those areas tend to get neglected, but not after this, guys. Remember, we're going to hit all three areas, upper, middle, and lower, and now you've got the attack plan to do that. If you're looking for a program that builds in all the muscles when we need to train them and how we need to train them for most of the efficacy in your workouts, head to athletex.com right now and check out our programs. In the meantime, if you found this video helpful, if you like the series, leave your comments below. Let me know what you want to cover. I'll do my best to do that for you. And if you haven't already done so, make sure you click subscribe and turn your notifications so you never miss a new video when we put one out. All right, guys. See you soon.